And so I was looking and waiting on the Lord for a message. And I didn't, you know, I'm a, I'm a procrastinator and I'm right down to the wire. And I said, you know, I need a few hours alone today. I, I, I want to make sure. I didn't get those hours. Not at all. And I went, Bob, you do this to yourself all the time. But the thing that saved me, Brother Pettis, was, but I'm always making messages. I mean, I got a couple hundred sermons starters in my phone. I got 700 books in my phone. I carry around a library. And so I already had this, and I wasn't going to do it. But as I looked at it, and I said, you better use it before Brother Bembry uses it. Now I want you to know I'm positive in the Holy Ghost. You're going to be blessed tonight. You're going to be so strengthened in your faith tonight. It's your faith that makes you successful in this business. Man, we are in the, uh, in the, uh, the home or the room of the miraculous. If anybody believes for the supernatural, it's this group. Can I get an amen somewhere? If anybody is going to expect God to do something right now, it's somebody in this room. Oh, come on. There's a child of God in this room somewhere. That has faith in their God. That believes in His Word. Man, I feel something. Well, you're preaching. <laughs> you better feel something. Hebrews, the ninth chapter. Let me get there with you. You're standing. Amen. Hebrews 9. I believe that's what we want. Did I write that down correctly? I did. Okay. Give me a second. Give me a second. Let's just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do verse 22 and I'm going to let you rest your tired bones. Because I know you're so tired. Hebrews 9, 22. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we're going to talk about what you brought to this world, your blood. We're going to exalt you. We're going to strengthen our religion by hearing your great word. We're going to be strengthened to serve you in the days ahead by this word. You're the ever-present God in the time of need. You're here right now, and we give you praise for your presence. We magnify you because your word said we're two You've and three got gathered. Mail. In your name, you're there. Lord, we know you're here. And anything is possible because you're here. And we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. And everybody said in Jesus' name. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. You can be seated. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory. You know, interesting was this morning, I was in the office, and a lady called from New York, wanting to get baptized. I said, you know, like Bob Barker, whatever his name is, come on down. <laughs> Man, talk about a fish jumping in the boat, come on. So I said, we can take care of you. Come on down, we'll talk about it a little bit. Talk a while. So it was going pretty good to the last second. Boy, she hung up. She says, you do baptize in the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Ah, nope. We baptize in the only name under heaven. Acts 4.12. I said that real quick because I, immediately I felt her pull back. I said, well, thankfully I've got her name and her number. You know, 
I mean, you know, a flounder will take the bait in and gum it a while. It, you, you know, you just don't pull the hook while they're tasting it. Is that right? You got you to give them a little minute to decide if they want to bite or not. So we're going to set the hook, Lord willing, another time because we got your number. But it kind of goes a little in, in, in line with what we're doing tonight. Hebrews 9, uh, 1. I sure hope that reading a little Bible doesn't put anybody off. 9 and 1 says, Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick, the table, the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the ark and the covenant laid round about. And you know he's, he's given a Bible study to the, the Hebrew people in this letter, stuff they know, but he's building a platform, and he says, And over it the cherubims and the glory shadowing the mercy seat, which we, we cannot now speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone, once every year, not without blood. In other words, it, the, it, the point of going was to take the blood. There was no point of going in the, in the holiest without the blood. That was the mission. Everything is secondary to the blood of the Lamb. That's right. I, the man preached a message. He said, when, who was the prophet that held up the baby, Jesus, and said, now I can die because I have seen the salvation of the Lord? What he's doing when he held that baby to his cheek was listening to the heartbeat, Brother Weber, because he was listening to the blood course through that little baby. It was the blood the baby brought. We got moral teachings. We've got thou shalt nots and what to do, but without the blood, that matters nothing. That baby had to come to bring that blood that was in its little body that was going to grow up and as that last drop came out the, the nail prints and out the side, that mission, that's what he said, it is finished. Mission accomplished. The blood has been delivered. Now, somewhere else in the deep south, everybody's been on their toes right now because it's the blood. It's the blood. Come on, y'all. It's Wednesday night. You got a Wednesday night spirit. It's the blood. Come on, if you can't shout about that, you can't shout about nothing. It's the blood. Come on, everybody standing on your feet right now. Come on. Come on. In the Holy Ghost, you ain't never seen a red drop. Let me tell you where the blood is at. It's in the Spirit. Come on, let's give him a healthy hand clap of praise. Everybody in this room that's been baptized in Jesus' name is blood bought. If that baby wasn't crucified on that cross, you'd have never been able to get into heaven. The holiest can only be entered with blood. You can be seated. This is so not politically correct. The world cannot stand the blood of Jesus. My God in heaven. He says, the Holy Ghost thus signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while as the first tabernacle was yet standing. I had a couple messages I was going to preach. One was, is that uh, I'm in this for the manifestation. I came to church because somebody said it was miracles. I didn't come for a religious institution. I came to see Jesus. And when Jesus is around, something's going to happen. I don't care if i got to wait by the pool of Bethesda for one whole year. I want to see God do something. I don't want a religion where he can't do nothing. Man, I want to see that angel come down and stir the water. Whoa! I heard Tony McCraney say, why they yell? Because they got passion. 
You want to be quiet, then go be quiet at home. But when you come in the tabernacle, God has got choirs. He's got angels. He's got preachers. He's got ministers. Quiet time is when you're home asleep. But when you come to the house of God, praise ye the Lord with a high sounding cymbal, with a loud voice. Bring him glory. Bring him praise. Stand on your feet and give him praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Which was a figure for the, you can be seated, yes, all right, good. Which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect, which means the antithesis is now we can be made perfect by the gift of Jesus Christ, which is the blood. I know it's arrogant, but I'm perfect. Because I ain't selling my, my, my character, I'm selling the blood. We cannot stand before God and say, I did this and that. Personally, if you're standing and being evaluated, you didn't make it. You're at the great white throne judgment. No. Which was the figure for the time then present. Which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands. That is to say not of the building neither by the blood of goats and calves but by his own blood. He entered in once. And to the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling and the unclean sanctified through the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, who through the eternal spirit, that's how it's done. You ain't never seen a red drop in this building, but it's through the eternal spirit that it's, it's done. Offered himself without spot to God. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgression that were under the First Testament, that would they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Why am I in this? And why do I fight for this? And why do I defend this? Because the Bible says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? I refuse to be browbeat by any other religion. Now, I love them, but I'm not going to give up mine so they won't, they won't be uncomfortable. By golly, I'm going to heaven because of this. And let me tell you something else. They're not going if they don't got this. The Bible says because they didn't believe, they're condemned already. I need to have the eyes that see what the scripture says. Because when I'm looking at all these people having fun, they are having fun, but they're in condemnation. Not because they're sinners, because they don't believe. They're condemned. Read that in John. They're condemned. Being condemned is a horrible fate. And so what happens if they don't get what we're enjoying here, sometimes casually, sometimes apathetically, sometimes lackadaisically, but if they don't get what we got, they're going to fall into the hands of God that is going to be angry with them, and he's not going to show any mercy. Their cries after he comes will fall on deaf ears. There's going to be nothing but an angry God judging sin. The blood has brought you uh, uh, the path to get out of an angry God. I don't want to see this God. The Bible says, behold the goodness and the severity of God. I don't want to know him in anger. He said, well, then you need to get behind the blood. Because when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. It's the blood that's going to shield you and protect you. It's the blood that we apply on people that's going to help them escape the angry God that's jumping to judge the world. You know this world is, is on a course of, of judgment with, the, with an angry God. And that's why we preach the gospel, why we witness, why we teach and preach Jesus' name baptism. Because they've got to have the blood. They've got to have the blood. They've got to have the blood to escape an angry God that's going to judge them. Angry God. Oh, no, I don't sell him 
my stuff. I said, I've been baptized in Jesus' name. I've been filled with your spirit. I'm walking in the light as you are in the light. Glory. Let's read some more Bible. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise it is of no strength at all while the tester liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people, according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water. See, blood and water. Nice there. And scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people. When Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, the Bible teaches that he offered up supplications. And in the Greek study of the language, he was offering up a branch wrapped in scarlet, just like it's talking about here, and it was a supplication. In other words, he was interceding for the lost, not himself. He knew that he had to get to the cross. He knew he wasn't supposed to die there. And that was the mystery in his mind. And he said, Father, if it be your will, but he's offering up a supplication according to language with groanings. God, they've got to have the blood. I can't die here. I've got to get to that cross. I've got to be offered as a sacrifice. This world is lost. Now, isn't that befitting of the character of Jesus Christ? I've got to finish my task. I can't die here. Yes, as a human, he was confused. I'm dying. I'm dying here. Great drops of blood. This is not where I'm supposed to shed blood. It's supposed to be offered as a sacrifice to make the type. That's why he's talking here. The blood, the water, the scarlet wool. He was, he was interceding. That's an intercession. God has interceded for our lostness. And that's why we're such happy people. Man. I had a dream. Somebody else said that once. I had a dream. And I was in a foreign country. It was jungle but I couldn't tell whether it was Asian or African. And I was, I was approaching a church service. Maybe I was invited to be a, a, you know, a, a missionary guest or something. I don't know why I was there. In this dream, I could see the crowd. It was off at a distance, but before I could get anywhere near it, the holy presence of God put me on my knees I couldn't believe what I was feeling from a simple people with grass thatched roofs and no sides to their building. But they had a mastery of getting in the presence of God. They didn't have all of our luxuries, but they had something that we struggle with which was that is, is getting into that holy presence and bringing God down so that it was so strong that a guest walking up at a great distance could not stand. I was on my knees slain by the holy. Anybody feel that? By the holy of what they were doing. They were having holy communion with God in reality, not just religious perfunctory statements. They were really in there, and it was so powerful. As a guest, I was put on my knees, and I was going, oh, my God, what is this? It's not fantasy. Amen. The God that we serve wants us to be able to enter into his presence with such childlike simplicity and bring his presence. Come on, does anybody love that concept? Oh, stand with me one more time. Let's just give him some love on our feet. Come on, just lift your hands and love him one more time. Lord, I want to be in the holy. I want to be in the holy. I want to feel that presence. I want to be... I want to be knocked down by your glory. I want to be put on my face by your presence. I want to worship you. Hallelujah. 
Amen. You can be seated in Jesus' name. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people, according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, everybody say, Moreover. See, he didn't just put the blood on the book. That's cool. He didn't just put the blood on the on all, all the people. I like that too. All the people had to have the blood. It says, moreover, he sprinkled blood both on the tabernacle, all the vessels of the ministry, and almost all things were by the law purged with blood. Did he lose his mind? Let me, let me give you a picture. You don't see that. Brother Holzberger, you don't see that in any religious artwork. All you see is those sanitized pictures of the tabernacle and the priest. Everybody's clean. But when you see in your mind the picture of what he just described, everything had blood on it. Everything had blood on it. He slung blood on the tabernacle, Brother Madej. He slung blood on the book. He slung blood on the people, all the people. He slung blood on all the furniture. Everything that was in the place dedicated to God got blood put on it. Let me tell you something else. That blood stayed there. They didn't run out and run home and go, oh, let's get this blood off my white suit. The priests were all in white. Do you know what white looks like when it's got blood slung all over it? He didn't go, let me just touch a little piece of it. The Bible said he sprinkled it. He just, what did you do if I just had little, little syrupy red stuff and all your nice clothes? And I started going, la, 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 la. If you knew what the blood was doing, you'd be saying, no, not just my hands and my feet, but my head and my whole body. Put it on me. Put it on me. And let me tell you something. In the New Testament, the blood is in the Word of God. That's why he says you're washed by the water, by the Word. As I preach, I'm putting blood on you in Jesus' name. Because the Word is bled for you, and it's the Word that's bleeding tonight, and it's the Word that's putting the blood on you. And you're being sanctified and washed by the Word of this gospel, and that's blood in that Word. Nobody in their right mind would say, don't you put none of that on me. No, not just me, but come and touch my house. Come and touch my car. Come and touch my wallet. Come and touch my bank account. Come and touch my marriage. Put that blood on everything I know, everything I own. Come and touch my media, my entertainment center. Put the blood on your entertainment center. Put the blood on your music. Put the blood on everything. Nothing but the blood. Put the blood on everything. I don't see nobody where he said, well, run out and get some, get some Ajax. No, I want that blood to stay on me. Because it's that blood that the spirit world can't stand. And I say the evil spirit world. They say, Jesus I know and Paul I know. But when they look at Bob Austin, they say, all I see is a bunch of blood from a crucified Savior on that man. They know the blood. That's why they resist it so hard. They know you got blood on you, spirit world. I'm not afraid of any demons. I hear people, I was just with clients today talking about, oh, evil spirits. They said, which one do you fellowship? <laughs> you know, I have a tendency to want to say something humorous right now, but I'm not going to do it. I said, can I just leave the tension there and maybe tomorrow, uh, Friday I'll, I'll tell you about the spirit I fellowship with. I, I, I fellowship with the eternal, eternal spirit, the everlasting spirit. The Almighty Holy Ghost Spirit. Oh yeah, we deal with a spirit. See, then all of a sudden, when they when you tell them about this spirit, brother Bimbry, they get all shut down. But if you talk about uh, some spirit, uh, whatever they called one of them is Brad or something. It's a modern spirit, I guess. <laughs> Everybody's ooh. Uh, I think I did this one time. Hey, Amen. I got the Holy Ghost. You want to see the? You want to see a spirit do something right now? Watch this in in, in Jesus' name. 
I challenge any devil in any devil in this world to come do better than that. They ain't gonna show. They wouldn't come within 100 miles of this place. They ain't can't move that chair. I got more power than any spirit running this world. You gotta believe that. They ain't coming in your house. The only thing that they do is cause fear. It's fear. That's all that is. Yeah, I might deviate a little bit, but yeah, uh, the lady that lived in a house we we rented in California. She was believed in reincarnation, believed her little boy was a reincarnated Nazi general. I mean, when you raise your kids to think that they're reincarnated Nazis, you know, you got spirits in your house. <laughs> so, you know, we rented that place, and uh, late at night, you hear a little bump in the night. You know, and all of a sudden, uh, the hair on the back of your neck stands up. This is what apostolic does. This is what apostolic does. Hold the horse. Hold my mule. <laughs> hold my mule. And we walk through every house. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Where's the darkest room in the house? The deepest, darkest, darkest. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, right? Jesus. Yeah, come on out. Jesus' name. Living room, kitchen, bathroom. Back then, hey, door, you you moved tonight, and I'm taking you down. <laughs> Never a problem. Even though just a couple blocks down the street was uh, back in the old days, they had drive-ins, and they were playing The Exorcist. Everybody's haunted the neighborhood, but ain't nobody bothering my house. Don't mess with my faith, because when I moved out of that place, an apostolic couple went in from another city. And I preached at that church, and that, uh, uh, and that couple came up to me, and they said, we got to ask you a question. Was there anything funny about that house? I said, yeah. <laughs> but it was all right after I took care of it. You need to take care of it. But they did. They said, it's spooky, and something's going on. I said, well, you know what to do. You're apostolic. You know what to do. In Jesus' name. Jesus I know and Paul I know. That which means I know Jesus really well. Paul I'm becoming acquainted. You need to let the spirit of this world become acquainted with your faith. Become acquainted with your doctrine. Acquainted with what you know in the spirit. They know you. And they know if you're scared. Show them you're not scared. Rebuke them in Jesus' name. Hashalabahatalamah. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Turn with me to Genesis 4.10. And somebody get me Hebrews 12.24. All right, you're slow. I'll get it. Hebrews 12.24. Genesis 4.10. Anybody got that? Who's got it? So much for my surprise. All right. I want you to keep your eye on that one and look at this one. It says in 1224, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. That blood speaks. Jesus said to, to Cain, and he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. I am so knowledgeable of forensics when it comes to blood because when they're looking for the person who, who perpetrated a crime, they do a, a blood analysis, a DNA. They sample it. They know this blood belongs to somebody. Amen. When I'm walking around, Brother my Swan, my blood that was put on me when the man of God put me underwater in Jesus' name, it's talking. He says it speaketh better things. The blood crieth. I am ground. Remember Adam, red clay. I'm made from dust thou art, dust thou shall return. This dirt that's got the Holy Ghost has got the blood that shouts out wherever I go. You got to know it. He said, come on, somebody. When I walk down the street, it's yelling, this man has been baptized in Jesus. Spirit world knows it. They know there's something about you. 
You can be around all kinds of people. If you're up with God and you're, you believe your faith and all that, all that we're talking about, your body, your very spiritual nature, the blood is there. You can't see it, but the Bible says it has been applied and it's still on you and it's talking out loud to the spirit world. Sanctified, redeemed, blood-bought, holy, cleansed, ready to meet the Lord, perfected, washed in the blood, Washed in the blood. It's crying out and saying, this man has been to Jesus. Come on, help me out, somebody. While you're sitting there, the blood of Jesus is yelling from your body to this world. He's got the blood. He's got the blood. While you're driving your car, the blood is on you. And it's telling the spirits all around him, this man is a blood-bought man. This man has been redeemed. It's crying better things in the world. Somebody got the Holy Ghost. I got the blood of Jesus on me. I got the blood of the Almighty God on me. The greatest story this world has ever known was shed blood. I've got the greatest thing this world knows. I've got the blood of Jesus. You can blame this on Brother Bembry. He was all over it the other day when he was teaching on the blood. I said, wow. Because that's the spirit. We're not raising a bunch of religious people. We just want a bunch of people that's got the blood of Jesus on them and knows it. We want a bunch of people that know they've been filled with the spirit of, of the, the Savior, the crucified one. Doesn't the Bible say the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will raise your mortal bodies? Man, that's enough to make me light and want to. Brother Dukes. You're going to make the rapture. I'm going up. I want to give the grave raspberries. Nah. Oh, grave, where is thy sting? You can't say that without the blood of Jesus. You can't say that to the devil. You can't say that to the world. They're going to throw rocks at you and they're going to hate you. You've got to know and you've got to believe that the blood of Jesus is with you. Woo! It's amazing. It's amazing. I was thinking about this the other day. And, uh, you know, blood, is, blood really does, is hard to get out of your garments. Blood is a tough, usually if you get blood on it, it's ruined. It's like getting wine. It's amazing how the Bible uses, well, grape juice, excuse me. But it's amazing how the Bible uses the fruit of the vine and blood as examples of each other. Amen. And when when it gets on your clothes, well, it's just all over. And so I looked it up. I just wonder how tough is this, Sister Blankenship, to get the blood off. Now this right here, blood stains. It sets very quickly once it gets on. Thank God. When we baptize somebody in Jesus' name, the blood got on them. Very quick. When I went down, I was engulfed in blood. I can feel the blood eating the crusty old sins of a 21-year-old youth. Oh, I, I amassed quite a resume of debauched living by 21. And when I stood in that water, Brother Stimson, I could feel, I know it was just air bubbles, but my imagination was thinking, it's the sin flaking off my body. It's being ate off like acid. The blood is so powerful, it was reaching into my wretched life and take it off and when i went under it, i mean when i went under it freeze time i'm frozen right there i'm under and that blood the bible says we were buried with him instantly quantum mechanics twin paradox anyway heisenberg rosenberg i was transported into the tomb with jesus because it said i was buried with him Amen. And I rose like him. 
Hallelujah. My dear lady, Father, Son, Holy Ghost won't do that. I was going to title this, How is the Blood Applied? Before I leave, I better tell you that. It says, apparently, there's a protein in blood, a protein component that acts as a binder, making the blood stain stubborn. I like that word, stubborn. Aren't you glad that when you are having a difficult day, the blood just, just doesn't leave you so easily? Aren't you glad that when you ain't as pretty as you are on other days, the blood still is on you? The blood doesn't fall off you all that easy. It's a stubborn item because there's something in the blood that will stay on you when you're having a bad day. When you ain't as pretty in your behavior. Thank God for that. He says it's, I like this word, notoriously difficult when dry. That means if you've been walking with God a while, it is that much harder. It sets quick and it becomes not just stubborn, but notoriously difficult to remove if you've stuck around a while. Come on, brother and sister. Aren't you glad the blood is a tough something? It's very, very tough. This world just can't take it away by blowing and throwing and yelling and acting up. It's on us. And it's a tough, stubborn, notoriously difficult subject to deal with. My watch stopped. It's only, it's only 8 o'clock. He said, I always would think that you would use hot water. He said, oh, do not apply heat to the blood. I loved it. It said, do not use heat. What are you telling me, God? He's saying, the world wants you cold because cold is the only way to take the blood off. Holy Ghost, take that where it's got to go. Holy Ghost, say that to who you got to say that to. Holy Ghost. Cold weakens the blood's grasp on you. My God. But heat... Binds it stronger than ever. You know, in the Holy Ghost, when you hear people saying, I want a church that's quiet and sedate, like the church of the frigid air, that's because the blood can't flow where there's death. It can only flow where there's some heat, where there's life, where there's revival, where there's people that are passionate and willing to put some fire on the altar and give God some heat. Come on, let's all stand on our feet and give God some heat. Make that blood strong in your life. Woo! Stop being mad at the preacher when he says, let's turn up the temperature. Don't give the preacher a hard time when he's saying, turn up the heat. Our God is a consuming fire. If there's musicians, you can come now. I don't want anybody to get nervous. Come on, if there's a musician. I heard Brother Hall say, any magician, I mean musician. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha,
Not only was the blood applied to the outside and everything, but remember the blood was all spread around on the inside. This blood is in your conscience. This blood is in your spirit. You're the tabernacle. No, you're not that you're the temple of the living God. And so when Jesus came into your heart as the high priest, he began to apply that blood into your holy of holies. He can't be in there. Because the Bible says a priest doesn't enter in, but with the blood. And it's the blood of Jesus that got into your spirit. Not just washed, but that's in and out blood application. Amen, amen. Praise God. Does this not help you have an appreciation for what you possess? Doesn't this kind of help improve your dimension and grasp of what Jesus has given you? I'm going to make a little shameless plug. You've got to deepen your theology of what you understand. You've got to get deeper in every aspect. Because that's what's going to be uh, uh, what's going to save you. You've got to know your word. You've got to love this word. Don't be religious. Don't be just religious. I'm, I'm closing, but I want to share this with you. Not only does the blood strengthen by your passion, your heat, but it's, it's, it makes you what you are and keeps you that way. When you lack the protein or the ingredients of what's in the blood, there is a condition. I have never heard of this condition before in my life. It's spelled K-W-A-S-H-I-O-R-K-R-R. -R. I know W-A-S-H is wash. It's K-Wash your core. K-Wash your core. It's a condition. It's a real live condition when the blood is weak. Here's what happens when you're weak in the blood of Jesus. And if application is tremendous. You have growth failure. Loss of muscle mass, strength. You have a decreased immunity to sicknesses. Man, when you're when you're cold and the blood is not on you and strong and operating, you ain't you have no strength, you don't grow. You get spiritual sicknesses. Your heart is weakened. And your lungs don't operate well. Your ability to take in the Spirit and breathe God. And the bottom line of not having a passionate experience with the blood of Jesus as you live and breathe is spiritual death. Amen. So what makes it strong in our life? The heat. The passion. Man, we've got plenty of time. Come on, young folks. Come on up to the altar. Let's have a little to altar. Let's thank God for the blood. There's a song that goes, thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shamahandolo Mohoye. Come on up and just worship for a minute. But right before I quit, I'm going to tell you how that blood gets on you. Come on.
The Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. And so we know the blood removes our sin. Now, this is for the tape and anybody that hears on Yoohoo or Yahoo or whatever, YouTube. When Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost and they asked him, what shall we do? This is the first gospel message ever preached in the New Testament. He stood up on the day of Pentecost and he said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. There is only one way to get remission of sins and that's by the blood. And so he said in Jesus' name, blood, name, remission, remission. It's not two ways, it's only one way. That's why we baptize in Jesus' name because the blood is in the name. The blood is in the name. That's why when you cast out devils, you're saying in Jesus' name. He said, here come the blood. That's why somebody's sick and, they, and you say in Jesus' name, you put the blood on them. Whenever you got a problem, you said in Jesus' name, you said it all. The blood's there. Come on, let's sing that song. In Jesus' name, washes away your sins. Hallelujah. Come on, the Holy Ghost is calling you. You need to be baptized in Jesus. Let's rejoice in Him. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's it, just apply the blood. Just apply the blood. 